Kay and Trish with Crafting Cousins. Thanks so much for stopping by. We hope you'll come back often and that you'll subscribe by hitting that little button below. Now, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pumpkin wreath form that I got from the Dollar Tree, some fabric from this piece I found at the thrift store, some ribbon of choice. I'm using this burlap ribbon from the thrift store, one of these leather pieces that I got from Dollar Tree, some zip ties, some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. Every time I go into Goodwill Outlet, I look through the bins that have the clothing in it for any fabric that catches my eye. I love being able to take it and repurpose it in some of my crafting projects, and I love the cheetah print on this little jacket. It had a stain on the front, but that didn't bother me. I'm going to cut the back off, and then I'm going to take it and kind of fit it around my pumpkin frame. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue along the edge of the wire, and then I just fold the fabric over and I use one of my little clips from the Dollar Tree to hold it in place until it gets set well. Now when I'm pulling my fabric around these edges I do pull it a little bit. I give it a little bit of tension on it but you don't want to pull it too tight because I found that when you do that it's going to warp this frame. This wire is a little bit flimsy and it warps easily and if you pull it too tight it doesn't hang right. Once I got the sides of this done, I went around with my hot glue gun and I'm just going to put glue all along and pull everything up and make sure that it's on there pretty taut. Once I get everything glued down, I take my scissors and go around and just trim this off so that I only have a little bit of overhang. I don't want it to look too messy from the back. And you see that every so often I would have to stop and use my glue gun again to make sure that everything was glued down. I did have a little areas where it didn't quite take. Now that I have my fabric on, I want to work on my stem. I'm gonna use a piece of nautical rope. This is the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I like to take it apart. You get three pieces. It's thicker than twine, and I love how it's kind of curly, and it just kind of gives it a better look to me. I glued down one side, and then I wrap it all the way up. I go over and then back down and secure it with a little more hot glue. I did use some hot glue all along the way to make sure that it didn't slip as well. I want to make a bow for my wreath so I'm going to take my ribbon and I just fold it over and loop it one more time. This is going to give me two loops on each side. Now I didn't measure this I just kind of held it up to see if it was as wide as I wanted it to be. Then I'm going to put a clip there to hold it in the center. Now I'm going to take another piece of ribbon. I didn't have a lot left on this, so I'm just going to use what was left. I trimmed it up, and then I folded it into a V in the center. I'm going to dovetail those ends. That just means folding them in half and cutting them at an angle. And then I'm going to scrunch it up in the center and put it behind those loops that I made. I'll use a piece of my rope, and I'm going to wrap around about two or three times tied into a double knot, and this is gonna give me a pretty little bow with very pretty tails to it, and then they're both turned the right way. To attach my bow to my wreath, I'm gonna slip a zip tie right up under the rope and use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna punch a hole in my fabric and I push one end of my zip tie through there underneath the wire. I pull the other end over the top of the wire and cinch it in tight and trim it off. Now my bow is attached to my wreath. The last thing I wanna do is use one of these leather pieces from the Dollar Tree. I think these are so pretty. And I'm gonna use another zip tie and just zip tie it to my stem right up under my bow. And with that, this project is finished. Today we are sharing 10 of our favorite ways to use those Dollar Tree pumpkin wreath forms, including four new ideas. We hope that you will love having them all together. If you are a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate you. If you are new here, we would love it if you would hit that subscribe button if you like what you see, and stay tuned because we have lots of DIYs coming your way. Hey 
y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these pumpkin-shaped wreath forms that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using one one and a half inch ribbon and two two and a half inch ribbons. The one in the middle came from Michaels. The two on the outside edges both came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be using this old pair of blue jeans. They're pretty worn out and pretty holy, but they're perfect for this project. I'm going to be using two of these leftover pieces from some five gallon paint stirrer sticks. I'm using some sisal rope that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's kind of a large diameter. One mini sunflower. Several sunflowers from this bunch that I got at the Dollar Tree. And finally, a zip tie, two chenille stems, and lots of hot glue. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut apart my blue jeans. I'm going to separate the right leg from the left leg and I'll only be using one leg of these jeans for this entire project. You do want to use some nice sharp scissors. Mine were a little bit dull but these are my fabric scissors. The first thing I'm going to do is use the part where the pocket is so that I can put the pocket to the right side of this wreath form so I can use it later when I decorate. And once I decided on my pattern I'm going to start here kinda in the middle there you can see I'm just to the right of the middle and I'm going to start gluing on each side and kind of get it tacked and then I start working my way around this form and pulling it as tight as I can to keep it nice and taut. And yes, I did come up a little short on the top, but I wanted my pocket further down so we'll cover that up later. And one thing you need to remember with this wreath is this is a Dollar Tree form. It's not quite as heavy duty as some of the ones you buy like at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. So it does give and it bends a little bit. So you just have to kind of compensate for it and pull your wrinkles maybe towards the bottom and towards the side, use stretchy fabric. Either way, it's never going to be 100% perfect. And I'm a perfectionist, so that just kills me. And once I finally got it, almost perfect, not perfect, almost perfect. Then I come in and cut off all the excess, trim up those ends, and just make it more professional looking. For this next part, I'm using the widest part of the leg, and I'm going to glue it first here towards the top. You'll need to look and reference the video here. And then I glue it down the side of the fabric that I've already used on the back. I hope that makes sense. I'm just kind of piecing it together here. Then I'm just trimming up the excess here so that we can pull it back through the wreath form and start folding it around once again, just like we did the first piece, getting it as tight as we can, tacking it, moving around to the side and making our wrinkles go towards the bottom so that we don't have a real bumpy, lumpy piece when we're done. And as you can see, I'm using finger protectors as I do this, and I would suggest that you do the same. And at this point, we do another trim job and get not too close to the edge because we don't want it to come unglued, but we do want to trim it up and make it look professional. Now it's time to cover up that hole at the top. I'm just going to take a piece of this extra fabric and I'm going to ravel one of the edges and then I'm just going to cut it off into a rectangle. Then I'll just start gluing it here at the edge. I'm going to use a pokey tool to push it up under the edge. And then I'll start working my way around the piece and just gluing it down. And the bow will hide all of this anyway, but I still didn't want to leave that big hole there just in case. Now we'll just trim off that excess and with that it's pretty much complete, but I didn't like the way the front looked with just the solid piece. So I cut another piece about four and a half inches wide and I raveled the edges. Then I'm going to come in, fold it over and glue it at the top and the bottom right over that third piece, if you will, that third little section of the pumpkin. And there's what it looks like so far. Now it has a little more character. I'm going to use these paint stirrer sticks and attach them to the top. I first glue in the one on the front because I want it to be perfect. And then I turn it over on the back. Once it's dry a little bit, I'm going to glue a second one right on top of it. I just want to bulk up this stem so it's not so short once I put the bow on because that always drives me crazy when I can't see it. The next thing I'm going to do is take my sisal rope and I'm going to glue it first to the back just poking it down into the form and then I'm going to turn it on the front and then I will glue it from then on on the front because I have to keep pushing it down to make sure every bit of the stem is covered. 
and then I simply work my way around the stem, cut it off at the end, and use a little more hot glue. Very simple. I do like the way it's coming together. So let's make a bow to go on top. I'm going to use this navy blue ribbon first. I'm going to make five inch loops on each side and eight inch tails. We'll just cut that off and then we'll come in with our second color and we'll make our tails just a little bit shorter and also our loops. And I'm going to do two loops on each side. This is the one and a half inch ribbon. Now we'll cut that off. Now let's come in with our signature ribbon and we're going to do one loop on each side and our tails are going to be a little shorter than the first tails under it and also our loops are just a little smaller. I'm going to use a zip tie, flip it on the back. Before I tighten it, I'm going to place in a chenille stem Then we'll cinch everything nice and tight, cut off that excess zip tie using our wire cutters and then every bow needs a lot of fluffing. I'm going to dovetail those ends by folding them in the middle and cutting from the fold out to the edge. And to attach it to my piece, I'm just going to use the chenille stem twist it around the back and I flip it over. Then I'm going to take a second chenille stem and twist them together and then finally twist them down upon themselves into a circle. So now we have a way to hang our wreath. Little fluffy and almost done. I'm going to use a miniature sunflower, a little hot glue, place it right there in the center and that will hide our zip tie. Then I'm just going to take my florals, I push the leaf towards the bloom, and then I'm going to keep the stems nice and long using my wire cutters. And then I just start poking them down in the pocket, and when I get them like I want them, I do use a little hot glue to make sure they're secured and stay in place. And with that, this project is pretty much complete. This is a project you could easily change out the flowers and the bow and use it more than one style for one month. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use a pumpkin wreath form from the Dollar Tree, some burlap fabric, I got mine from Joann's, a witch's hat wreath form from the Dollar Tree, I will be cutting it down, some zip ties, some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, some brown felt, I got mine from Joann's, some black cording, I got this from Dollar General, but they also have it at Hobby Lobby. Some black velvet fabric, I would have preferred to have felt, but I was out. Some orange foam sheet, but you could use felt. Some fall florals from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. Now this project isn't hard to do at all, but it does have a lot of steps to it. But we're gonna take them one at a time, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is. The first thing I wanted to do was cover my frame with my burlap fabric. So I'm going to use my hot glue, I put a little bit on my frame, I wrap my fabric around it, and then I put a clip on it to hold it until the glue sets. Now when I got to that stem, I did put a little cut on each side of it so that I could fit it through there, that helps. And then we're just going to keep going around our frame until it's all covered. Now, with this fabric, you want to put a little bit of tension on it because you don't want it to sag. You want it to look nice across there, but you don't want to pull it too tight because if you pull it tightly, it's going to warp your frame. So just give it a little bit of tension so that it fits across there and then glue it down. Once we get all of our fabric glued down, then we're gonna come back and trim it off so that it only has about an inch overhang. And then I used a little more glue to hold that down as well. Once my fabric is covering my frame, I'm going to add my witch's hat to it. Now I did cut off the bottom. I only kept those three sections at the top because I felt like that was big enough. And then to attach it, I'm going to take my zip tie and I push it down through my burlap since it's got those little holes, it goes down really easy. And then I pull it back up on the other side of the wire and I capture that hat frame in there. I don't know if I'm making sense, but if you look, you can see what I've done. I also used a zip tie and I tied it to the stem at the top so that it would stand up. Now we're going to take our felt and I'm going to wrap it around my hat. Now you see I started putting glue there, but that was a mistake. I do end up having to take that up so you don't have to do that in the beginning. 
Now I'm going to use some raffia. This is just some raffia I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if I showed you guys this when I was showing you my supplies. This was kind of a last minute idea to give him some hair because you know scarecrows have hay out of them. So I grabbed some raffia I had and I just start cutting it into pieces and gluing it across the top. Now this is messy and it will burn your fingers, but once you get over to where the fabric's gonna be, you can put your glue down, stick your raffia on top of it, and then push that fabric down on top of that and it glues it all down together. It doesn't burn your fingers and it holds that raffia so that it doesn't fall off and make an even bigger mess. We're going to do that till we get all the way across the top of our pumpkin. And then once we do that, we will also have our hat glued down all the way across. We'll trim that off and then I'm going to flip it over. And now this part is just a lot of gluing and pulling and just kind of forming your hat. I wanted to have a rectangular hat like would go on top of my scarecrow. So I just would cut off my fabric, pull it around my frame, glue it down, kind of glue it together. Up there at the top, I end up folding it under so that it looks nicer. And then I kind of fold it over and once I just kept doing this, it came together and it actually looked like a hat. I will make sure that I glue that seam down on the back so that it holds. Now I cut another piece of that felt. This one was about four inches wide and I don't know, probably 18, 24 inches long. I didn't measure it, I just cut off a big piece. Then I'm going to glue it across the top of this over the raffia and over that seam where the felt comes. Now, as I'm gluing it, I also pinch it up and give it a little bit of a pleat and this causes it to ruffle out and now it looks like a floppy brim on the hat. Y'all, this turned out so cute. Just keep pinching it up and gluing it down till you get to the other side. Then I took some of my nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree and I glued a piece right across that seam so that you didn't see it and secured it in the back. I decided I wanted another piece there just to kind of thicken it up so you could see it and it didn't look like it was hiding something. So we'll glue another piece down. Now I'm going to take a couple of leaves that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna glue those down on top of my rope and then I'll take one of my sunflowers, cut the back off and glue it down there as well. For the eyes, I took a piece of paper and I just kind of sketched out a big teardrop and I laid it up there to make sure, you know, that it was gonna look right. It wasn't too small or anything. And then I cut two of those out of my fabric. Now, I thought I had some black felt and I didn't, but I did have this black velvet from this dress and it worked just fine. For the nose, I folded my foam sheet in half and just cut a triangle and it was too big. So I just kept cutting it down till I liked how it looked. And then I used my hot glue and glued all three pieces down to my face. For the mouth, I took a piece of this black cording and I laid it across and cut it off so that I could have an idea of how I wanted his mouth to look. And then I just used my hot glue and I'd make a strip and then I would just lay it down on top of it to glue it down. Once I got the first piece down, I thought it needed to be just a little bit thicker. So I glued another piece right under it and made them touch and it thickened up my mouth. And y'all, he turned out so cute. I love this expression on his face. Now for the nose, I decided to give it just a little more detail. So I cut a few more pieces of that um, cording I had, and then I glued those down to make it look like stitching on his nose. For his eyes to give them expression, I took some white chalk paint and I just painted these little colons at the bottom. And then I made two little dashes up at the top and this just lit him up, gave him an expression, and I absolutely fell in love with him. To make a hanger for this, I took a darning needle, I threaded my cording into it, and then I just pushed it into my fabric, making sure I went up under the wire so it would hold. I'm gonna pull it through, and then I will take those two ends, tie a knot, make it a loop, trim it off, and with that, this project is finished.
Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our craft videos with you, chatting and hanging out with you on lives and meeting new people at craft shows. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of the pumpkin wreath forms from the Dollar Tree, some fall florals. Most of these came from the Dollar Tree. I did get those berries from Walmart. Some floral foam, some ribbon of choice, some zip ties, some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, one of these wooden words that I got in a pack from Hobby Lobby, you get blessed and thankful, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. We are going to keep this one really simple. I'm gonna take some floral foam and I just kind of press it into my form so I know where the wire is gonna meet that and then I kind of dig out a trench and I'm going to add some hot glue into that and then I'll stick my wreath form down into it. Now I'm going to take some old ribbon that I had on hand, you can use any kind of fabric, and I just cut a piece off. I'm gonna put some hot glue on the back and stick that down and then wrap it around to the bottom. This is just going to give it more stability. Now I want this wreath form to lay flat against the wall, so I took a knife and I just kind of trimmed it down until it did. Before I start adding any of my florals in, I want to go ahead and work on my stem. I don't want to mess up my florals while I'm working on my stem. And to do this, I'm just going to take some nautical rope that I got from Dollar Tree, and I like to take it apart. You get three different pieces, and it has this wavy look, and I just love that. I wanted to wrap it around my stem this time so that it would completely cover it. I didn't want to just wrap the wire. So we'll do that all the way up and glue it into place. Now we can start on our florals. I took some of these florals that I got from the Dollar Tree. I love how these look. Now I think the yellow one with the pumpkin actually came from Walmart, but it was only 97 cent. So check both places. I like to cut these apart. This gives me more flexibility and I have more control over how they're going to go in. And I put a little bit of hot glue on the end of the stem to make it stay in better. Then you're just really poking it in until you like how it looks. I loved using these longer little flowers here that came from the Dollar Tree. This just gave it some dimension coming out of the bottom and going out the side. And it just kind of pulls the eye and gives color in more places than one. I'm going to use some of my bigger pieces at the top to fill this out. I wanted to nestle that little pumpkin and that pine cone in there, give it that fall look. And I love this little berry thing. It gives it some height as well. We'll keep doing that until we're happy with our floor. Florals. Now, once I'm happy with all of that, I'm going to take one of these little wooden words from Hobby Lobby and I cut off a couple little pieces of ribbon that I had. And now I'm going to use hot glue and those little pieces of ribbon and I glued this onto my wire form. And y'all, this held really well. Now I want to make a bow for this, so I took my ribbon and I kind of measured across to see how wide I wanted it, and then I'm going to loop it three times. This is going to give me three loops on each side for my bow. I'm going to pinch it up in the center, then I'm going to cut another piece of ribbon to use for my tails, and I'll scrunch it up in the center as well. I'll use a piece of twine, wrap it around the center about three or four times. This is going to hold it together. But before I tie it, I took a little piece of chenille stem, put down on there, and then tied it into a double knot to hold it into place. Now I'm going to dovetail my ends of my ribbon. I just fold them in half and cut them at an angle. And then I'm going to attach it to my form using that chenille stem. I pull it through that stem of my pumpkin and then I twist it a couple times and then I take the chenille stem and twist it on itself making a loop and that's how I'm going to hang it. Now I'll pull my tails down make those look nice and then I'm going to pull out my loops and fluff them up for my bow. I thought at this point that it needed some more color, so I grabbed another one of my little flowers and I'm going to glue it into the center. And then I'm going to use a couple of these bunches of these berries and glue one on each side. And once those are in place, this project will be finished. Hey 
Hey y'all, this is Kay. This is the very first pumpkin wreath I ever made with one of these Dollar Tree wreath forms back in 2020. I'm going to be using some cute pumpkin fabric. I think this came from Hobby Lobby. Some burlap ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby. Some E6000 and some hot glue. The first thing I'm going to do is cut strips of my fabric wide enough that they will fit on one section of the pumpkin. I'm going to start out with a lot of E6000 right in the center and then I'll come in also with some hot glue and make some spots so we can have that fast hold and then give that E6000 time to dry and then I'm going to start in that center pulling my fabric over making sure it's nice and snug and kind of straight as well and I work my way from the center towards the bottom again pulling it tight and I'm gluing it more towards the back than the front. Use a little more E6000, little more hot glue, and pull it tight to the top. Basically, I just go back and forth, making sure that I work on a section at a time, and it gives that section time to dry while I go work on the bottom and then come back to the top and so forth. Then when I get to the top, I'm just going to cut my fabric off some and then I'll fold it over and again, I'm just using hot glue and E6000 and pulling it tight and making it look nice and neat. Takes just a little bit of time, but it's worth it in the end because it stays nice and smooth. And once that is set, then of course we're going to do the bottom the same exact way and fold it over neatly at the end. And then once we have it nice and neat, I'm going to pull it around towards the back. I'm going to cut off any excess fabric that I need to on the sides. And I'm just going to make sure that it is glued around my post really well. And maybe even down to the back side of the fabric. I hope that makes sense. And now we're starting on the second one. But I got a little smarter this time. And I'm using those clips that I bought at the Dollar Tree to hold it down on each side. So I have the hot glue helping it stay down and in place. And I can give that E6000 time to dry. But those clips really do help substantially. And I'm doing this one the exact same way that I did the first one. Started in the middle because that was the easiest one to do. And then now I'm working on this side. You want to make sure that your lines don't look extremely crooked. You want them to be kind of straight and on a diagonal, if that makes any sense at all. And glue it, turn it towards the back and glue it again and trim it up. And here's the third one. I didn't think there was any use to really show that again, but I am trimming there. And I make sure that everything is nice and taut. Now it's time to come in with the burlap ribbon, which I'm going to apply to the back side on this section, the other middle section, and both sides. I start first here at the top and just glue that down. We'll trim it up later. And I'm going to glue it to the actual fabric so I'm only using hot glue. So it's a lot easier, a lot faster, but you do want to use finger protectors because you know that glue can come right through that burlap ribbon and burn you something awful. And then you just work your way across this piece. And when you get to the bottom, you just place a little hot glue on the wire and come back and cut it once it sets really well. And then you also want to trim up the sides of your fabric because we don't need all of that bulk. And now you can see I've placed in the second side. Now the trickiest part about doing the outside, which I'm starting here, is to make sure that your ribbon is going to cover that widest part of that curve. As long as you're watching your spacing, and you could even start in the middle and work your way out because I am having to glue it to this metal bar, and then I'll wrap it around and make sure it's glued to the back side as well. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to fold it around, and then on the inside there, I'm just again gluing it to the orange fabric. And of course, we do want to trim up those edges. And I will do the second outside piece exactly the same way, gluing it first to the front, wrapping it around the sides, trimming up the piece, and making sure everything's tight. Now I'm going to start with some large jute 
rope and I'm going to tie it to the top of the pumpkin stem and then I'm going to glue it all around the edges of this pumpkin. I just couldn't leave it alone. I didn't like a little bit of the black showing. So here you can see I've worked my way around the entire pumpkin gluing it down and then I'm going to wrap it around the stem and cover the stem as well. Again, I'm just using hot glue at this point. And if you have too much hot glue showing, just use a heat gun or a blow dryer and it will heat it up and melt it into your cording. And then I decided, oh, you know what? I need to line the sides of my pumpkin. So I'm going along with this same jute rope and I'm going to glue it to the sides of the orange fabric and I'm going to work my way around my pumpkin. I just couldn't leave it alone. I just wanted a totally complete finished pumpkin. And this is to date my favorite pumpkin wreath that I have made out of all of the ones I have tried. And here's what it looks like all glued into place, all of the rope around the edges. To decorate the top part of my pumpkin, I'm going to make a swag using these cattails from the Dollar Tree. Then I'm going to wire in some Dollar Tree sunflowers right in the center, putting them kind of at a triangular shape the more orangey one towards the center. And then once we have everything glued and wired into place, I'm also going to put some pomegranates on the side because I just love pomegranates for fall decorating. And that's what our swag looks like so far. Then I'm just going to wire the piece right to the top of my pumpkin. And I'm going to turn it on the back here and wire in a chenille stem to be the hanger for our wreath. Just twisting it down upon itself. And there it hangs on my door, my favorite pumpkin wreath to date. We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. it's Trish. For this project we're going to use one of these pumpkin wreath forms from the Dollar Tree and I'd like to thank our friend Evelyn for the gift of these. Some white spray paint, I'm using Krylon paint and primer in one. Some lace from this old dress that I got from Goodwill Outlet but you can use any lace. Some pearl and lace trim from Hobby Lobby. Some assorted fall florals from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use yet and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So since we're using lace, this frame is going to show through it and I wanted to make sure that it was white. So we're gonna take it outside and give it a really good coat of our spray paint. Now we're gonna take our form and we're going to cover it with our lace. I took the lace off the dress and cut it up the seam so that I would have a flat piece. And then I'm just gonna use hot glue and attach it to this frame. I started at the bottom down there and I actually did use the hem on this dress. It kind of helped get this anchored and I'm just kind of gluing it right onto the wire. I wrap it around it and it actually stuck really well. Then we're going to flip it over and get a good look for how it's going to look. I knew that I needed it to be taut so we're going to cut off some of that excess at the top to make it easier to work with. Then I just start putting some glue down on my frame and gluing my lace to it. And when I got to the stem, I kind of cut around this, make some um, cuts so that it can fit down better. And then I just keep gluing it. Make sure that you're pulling it really taut whenever you're doing this so that your lace doesn't gap. I finally figured out that the best way to do this was to go ahead and gather up one side into my hand and pull it tight and then just take my glue gun and run right around that wire and glue my lace right down to it. I just kind of pinch around it. And I know it looks like I'm burning myself, but I'm really not. I have my glue gun set on a lower setting, so it's not that hot. And when I do that with my fingers, it's really more because it's sticking to my fingers than it's actually burning me. But please be careful if you do this because it is easy to burn yourself like this. This lace, of course, just lets the glue come straight through it. 
We're going to continue to work our way around this whole form, gluing it down. And now I'm going to go back up here and work on that stem a little bit more. We'll trim that down and then glue it right down as well. Once we get our lace completely glued down, I'm going to go around and trim off all of that excess that's there on the back. I had a couple of places that didn't glue down quite so well, so I made sure to go back in and tack those so that this would stick. Now I'm going to take that pearl and lace trim that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to glue it along all of my wire. I really like this on the spines of this pumpkin because it helps it stick out and make it look more like a real pumpkin does those ridges kind of stick out and with the pearls come on pearls and lace y'all that's about as shabby chic as it comes isn't it <laughs> once we had our trim glued down to all of the spines on our pumpkin then we're going to go right around the edge of this as well now the way this is it has lace on both sides of those pearls and i was gluing the pearls directly to the wire so the other edge of this kind of just wraps around the back of my pumpkin and then the top edge lays on top and gives it that really pretty decorative look i don't know if you can tell as much on camera as you can in person but y'all this is so pretty now I'm going to take one of those ties off of that dress, which it was just ribbon, and I'm going to wrap it around the stem of my pumpkin. I put a little bit of glue ever so often, and then I just keep wrapping until it's completely covered. Now you could use any ribbon, or you could use twine, or whatever you want here. To decorate this, I grabbed some of my fall florals that I got from the Dollar Tree. I love these little orange and red flowers that they have. I'm not real sure exactly what they are, but they're really pretty and they really do remind me of fall. I glued down some of the leaves from that leaf pick that I got and then I put one of my red flowers and three of my orange ones and I'm going to go in at the bottom of this and add a couple more of those leaves. I just kind of like having them peeping out there. Once I'm happy with my leaves, I took some of these feathers. These also came from the Dollar Tree, and I thought they looked kind of cool hanging down the front of the pumpkin. So I glued in three of those. And then this bush that has these little berry-looking things on them, I have no idea what they are, but they are so cool looking. I glued four of those down as well. Now I'm going to fill in with a few more flowers and then we'll put some of those green leaves on there and with that this project is complete. And there's our completed wreath. I love this one. Y'all know I love some lace and pearls just bring it up some. With these fall florals I think it is the perfect shabby chic autumn wreath. I'm going to put this one on my office door so I can enjoy it. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these pumpkin forms that I got at the Dollar Tree. Last year, if you recall, I did two of them and we will link that video below and perhaps there'll be a card up above. I'm going to be using some wooden beads. I got mine at Hobby Lobby and they were 40% off in the fall section. I used this entire strand. I'm going to be using some jute twine. This is probably a medium width and both of mine came from Hobby Lobby. And this is the wider width that came from Hobby Lobby. I will be using two different sizes of twine. I will be using some two and a half inch wired ribbon. This looks kind of like burlap or you could even make the argument that it looks like a linen. It came from Michaels last year when it was marked about 75% off. I will need a chenille stem and a zip tie and quite a bit of hot glue and finally my easy bow bow maker. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off these small pieces in the middle just at the top. I'm using my tin snips. You could also use some kind of hacksaw. This is just what I had on hand and it works pretty well. 
I'm just going to take the smaller of my jute twine and I'm going to tie it right here where the stem intersects the frame and I'm just going to start wrapping it around. You need to pull it really tight and hold it taut each time because you want to cover all of the black. And when I get back to the pumpkin stem, I just continue across and finish covering the V part as well. Now I'm going to start with my larger twine. I'm going to tie as tight of a knot as I can here at the bottom and push that around to the back and secure it with some hot glue to make sure it stays in place. That's important. And then I'll slide on one of my wooden beads and I'm going to wrap behind the bead there and make one loop of twine and then I'll pull down another bead and then I'll wrap again and I'll just keep repeating this and pulling down my beads. Because the rope is so thick, it actually stays in place and it looks like a macrame finish or somehow that you did a loop of rope and placed on the beads onto the rope, but I really didn't. I just placed them on the wire frame. And so I continue that process and work my way down. And don't worry, I'm not going to show you all six of them but I do want you to get kind of the feel for the process and I will speed it up at warp speed here in a few minutes, guys. And once I get to the end, I kind of wrap it around again and I decided I would put a little more glue to hold that in place. I couldn't fit another bead on there and then I just glue it down to my frame with the hot glue and I pull that twine to the back and secure it really well and between the two, it holds it in place very nicely. And then I'm just cutting off those end pieces and starting again. And then I'm just going to continue this same process every time. And just so you know, it took me 12 beads on both of the outside ones, those first two I did. And then for the other four, it took 15 beads to complete the whole line. And between that, I used every bead on the strand that I got from Hobby Lobby. So you can probably see that I covered the bottom part of my stem with the smaller jute twine and now I want to go in and cover the rest of my stem. So I just cut off a long piece and kind of approximated what I would need and first of all started working on at the bottom because otherwise it would have a V and I wanted to kind of fill that in so it wouldn't have a V. At the end it sort of looked like an X pattern on the front. And I kind of like the look of that. That didn't bother me at all. And if you had a bow, you won't even see it. And then I simply went in and filled in, gluing ever so often the entire stem with the larger of the jute twine rope. Cut off the excess, and there it is. That can be your finished piece right there. The bow is totally optional for this project. You could make an argument either way, and either you're a bow person or you're not a bow person, and that will determine what you do. But I'm going to make an eight inch bow. I am putting four inch loops on each side. There will be three to the left and three to the right, eight inch tails. I'm putting an extra smaller loop in the middle. I'm going to cut off that in there with my scissors. I'm going to use a zip tie and place it right beneath our extra loop we made. And I'll start pulling it tight, but before I do, I'm going to put a chenille stem right in the back, cut off that excess, give it a good fluffing, and of course, dovetail the end of the second side. And there's our bow. Pretty easy and simple. And I'm going to show you both looks. The first look to me has kind of a boho vibe, but I really like it. It's kind of simple. And then the second look, of course, I added a bow. If you're someone like me and you think you just gotta have a bow, well, there it is. Happy Fall Fest, y'all. Hey, 
y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these pumpkin wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. Our sweet friend Evelyn gifted us several of them. Some of this cotton cord, I got mine from Hobby Lobby and I ended up using about one and a half rolls. Some assorted florals, I got these from the Dollar Tree. Some twine, some acrylic paint in brown and orange. Some ribbon, I'm using this from the thrift store and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I wanted my cord to be orange and they did not have orange at Hobby Lobby. So I decided that I would try to dye some. I got one of these plastic bowls and I put some water in it and then I just mixed in some orange and some brown paint until I got this burnt orange color. Now it does end up drying darker than it looks here and I was really happy with the way it looked once it completely dried. So once I got my paint and my water mixed up and you don't want this to be too thick because it'll become stiff if your paint is too thick. I would just take my rope and stick it down into my paint mixture and then I just kind of pulled it up through my fingers and this took a lot of the water out of it and um, helped to distribute it throughout the cording. It did take a little bit of time to do this and y'all it is really messy. As you can see I had paint everywhere so if you don't want to have to deal with that you could just use it as white. That would look really good especially if you are into the farmhouse style but they also had other colors like pink, yellow, gray so whatever your preference is. We will finish coloring all of our cord and then I left it to dry overnight. So to start our pumpkin, I cut off a piece of my cord that was about 48 inches long. That's what I needed for these ribs of this pumpkin. You find the center and press it up against the back of your wire. Then you're going to take one side of it and fold it over the top of your wire, kind of like a figure four. Then take the other rope and you're going to put it over that rope under the wire and then pull it through the loop. When you pull it, this makes a knot and that's all you're going to do for this whole project. We're just going to keep making these knots all the way down. I'll show you again. Fold it over, bring the other rope over the top of it and under the wire and through the loop and then pull it into a knot. This was actually kind of therapeutic. It took me probably an hour to do the whole pumpkin, but I just ended up taking it into the living room and sitting on the sofa and doing this while I watched TV, and I actually enjoyed it. Now, as you keep making your knots all the way down this wire, it is going to start spiraling. You see how it's starting to turn already and it turns into a spiral and I love this. Now you can see that our rope is a little bit variegated and I actually like that too. That is like the real coloring in a pumpkin so it actually turned out for the best. Now when I get to the end of this wire to finish this off all I do is um, take these two pieces of rope to the back side of the pumpkin, tie them in a double knot, and trim it. Now that we have all of our ribs on our pumpkin finished, we're going to start on the outside. And I'm starting here at the V. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Now this time I'm using a really long piece of rope. This is probably about half of that roll. So it does, you know, take a little bit to pull this through but it's worth it and it's still kind of mindless work. So we'll start there in that V, we're gonna make our loop and then put the rope over under the wire and pull it through and we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around this. Now when you get to your ribs, you'll do one knot on one side and then one knot on the other side and that actually brings it together and makes it look more like one piece and makes it look full. You're gonna keep doing this all the way around your pumpkin. And then when I got up here back to the top, I'm gonna to show you how I finished it. You see that I went on the other side of that wire and then we're gonna do the same thing there at the stem. We go um, on one side and then go on the other and the knots actually come together and make it look full. Now when I get to the very end, I'm just going to tie a double knot 
and this will hold perfectly and then just trim off those ends. And there's our pumpkin. Now for the stem of my pumpkin, I ended up taking a piece of twine and I'm gonna do the exact same process all the way around my stem. Now, if you don't want to knot it like this, you could just wrap the twine around it or you could paint it or whatever you want to do. But I really like the thought of doing this same knot all the way around the stem. And I thought it actually turned out pretty cool with this twine. Now, of course, it's on a much smaller scale, but it does start um, swirling around and I liked it. Now I'm going to take some raffia and I just grabbed a handful of it. I tied a knot in the middle and then I glued it right there to the base of my stem. I want to decorate with some of my fall foliage so I took out some of those leaves and I glued like three of those down to the top right around that knot on that raffia. And you can use, you know, whatever colors you want. I used one of each color. And then once I got my leaves glued down, I decided to make a bow. So I grabbed this um, burlap ribbon that I got from the thrift store. And we're just going to do a simple bow by um, crossing the tails over each other and leaving a loop on each side. Then I find the middle and I scrunch it up into the center and then take a piece of twine, wrap around it about four times and tie it into a double knot on the back and trim it. Now we're just going to dovetail those ends by folding it in half and cutting it at an angle. And there's our little bow. We're going to fluff that up and then we're going to glue it right there to the base of our stem, right on top of that knot from that raffia. I like to play with those ends and kind of ruffle them up some. And I had this little bunch of berries, so I just put a little bit of hot glue on there and stuck it like coming out of the um, bow. And I thought that looked really cute. And then we'll finish it up by gluing a sunflower right into the center of our bow. And with that, this project is complete. And there's our finished project. I really like this one. It is very simple. It just takes a little bit of time to complete, but I love the look of the variegated coloring on the cord, and I really do like the swirl that you get from this macrame knot. I'm looking forward to having this as part of my fall decor. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. Hey y'all, this is Kay. This is a project I made way back in 2020. I'm going to be using one of those pumpkin forms from the Dollar Tree and some deco mesh that is five and a half inches wide. I used five rolls. I'm going to be using some ribbon to make a bow. I did use two of those that I'm showing here, but also added another one. I'm going to use a bunch of chenille stems, some cutting tools because we need to cut our mesh. And speaking of that, let's cut off that ragged edge. And then I'm going to come in and start cutting 12 inch pieces. And you're just going to keep cutting your mesh 12 inch pieces until you finish all five rolls. There is about 30 feet on each of these rolls. This is a very full wreath, so we need a lot of mesh. I cut my mesh with a rotary cutter, but if you want to cut yours with a hot tool, you are welcome to do so. Let's cut some chenille stems. We're going to cut 75 chenille stems. Yep, that's a lot. Cut them in half because you don't need a whole one. That will just be wasteful. Now let's start folding our mesh. We're going to fold in those raw edges and then I'm just going to ruffle it in the center and wrap a chenille stem around the middle of each one. And you'll just repeat this process over and over. I actually did about 30 at a time and then I started working on my wreath and then I would come back and do another 30. But it's the same thing over and over. Fold in the raw edges and ruffle in the center and make tiny little poofs over and over until you finish all five rolls of your mesh. This is the perfect technique for a beginner using deco mesh because it can be a little intimidating at first. 
This particular wreath is easy, but it is also time consuming. I don't want to mislead you there. Now I'm going to start putting them on to this pumpkin wreath form. I'm going to just twist them on and then slide them down to the bottom and I'll just work my way across. Sometimes I did work just one long piece at a time, but it actually works better if you just go straight across, and I figured this out later, and work your way across as you go. But you can see, I started in the middle, and then I moved over to each side. I think I just got bored when I was just beginning to do this. But the main thing is to keep all your pieces kind of separated and pushed to the front, so you keep all that fullness of that mesh pushed towards the front. You don't want it sticking out the back where nobody's going to see it, right? We want our wreath to be nice and full. I wish I could tell you how many I used on each of the metal pieces, but I didn't count them. I lost count as I was doing this wreath, I remember that. But I just wanted it to be nice and full, and you might have one or two left, but you can always probably slide them in even if you do. My goal was just to make a fluffy, attractive wreath to place on my door. And in the end, just one simple technique for the deco mesh, but a beautiful wreath that's nice and full and even looks like it has curls. In the end, I decided to go with these three ribbons. They are all three two and a half inch wired ribbons, a denim, a plaid, and this burlap. I'm going to make five inch loops on each side. I'm using my Easy Bow Maker and I'm doing eight inch tails. I'm just going to twist the ribbon as I place it down between the pegs, making sure that the correct outside is to the outside each time. When I start with the second ribbon, I'm going just a little shorter on the bows and a little shorter on the tails so that everything will show in the end. And now we'll go in with the third ribbon and I'm going to use this cute plaid. I think it came from Michael's. And I'm going to once again make my tails just a little bit shorter than the bottom ones. And I'm going to make my loops just a little bit smaller. And because this is my signature ribbon, I'm going to do two loops on each side instead of just one. Now let's take a zip tie. I'm going to slide it underneath and then we'll take it out of our pegs. I'm going to get a chenille stem to place into the back before we tighten it down. And that's how I'm going to attach it to the top of the wreath. And so we'll pull that nice and snug. We'll cut off the excess with our wire cutters. And every bow needs a lot of fluffing and you need to dovetail those ends. And that means you just fold it in half and cut it from the center to the outer edge of the wire. And if you need to adjust the length, this is the time to do it. Lots of fluffing to make a pretty bow. And now I placed it into the wreath form. I just twisted around that top piece. And there it hangs on my door. This is still one of my favorite wreaths for fall. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using some limbs that I got out of my yard. I have a weeping willow tree right outside of my window and I love the limbs on it, but now that we're getting close to late summer, early fall, they're starting to fall off. And my husband was cleaning up the yard and had gathered up a bunch of trash and put in his truck. And when I saw these, I thought, you know what? We can use those for something beautiful. I'm also going to use this pumpkin wreath form that I got from the Dollar Tree at the end of the year last year, some floral wire from the Dollar Tree, some ribbon of choice. Most of this came from the thrift store, but I did get some of it from Dollar Tree. I didn't use the one with the words, but I did bring in some orange ribbon, some twine, some florals. Most of these came from the Dollar Tree, but the big mums did come from Walmart. I'm going to be using part of this grapevine wreath that I took apart last year and used in a couple of different projects. Since it is dry and brittle, you do need to soak it to make it more pliable again. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. So for today's project, we have been challenged by David Owens 
to make some projects out of trash that we could sell to make cash. And since Kay and I do sell at craft fairs, I thought I would show you a couple of my best sellers. And the first one is going to be this pumpkin wreath. Now, when I saw these limbs, I thought that this could make a beautiful fall wreath for my door because I love that outdoor look and nothing screams fall more than bare branches. So I took my branches and I measured the length of that spine there and I cut off six pieces that would fit there. And I did six because these are pretty thin and I wanted to be able to cover that black wire. Then I took some floral wire, again I'm using black to make sure that it blends in, and I would wrap it around the bottom securing it, then I would lay my sticks over my spine, and I take that wire and I just kind of go up it, wrapping around as I go until I get to the other end, and I secure it on the other end, and then I clip off the branches on both ends to kind of make them even. You don't want them sticking out because that will scratch your door. Now I also did not wrap these too tight. You don't have to. This is going to hold it into place for you and I also wanted it to kind of blend in and not stand out with all that wire. Now I'm going to keep doing this across all of my spines. On the spines that are on the outside, they are a little bit shorter than the ones in the middle because of the way they bow out. So you do want to make sure that you measure those before you break it. It's easy to cut off <laughs> your limbs once you get them on there, but you can't add back. So make sure that you make them long enough. Now again, I am going to do this to all of these spines and I'm not going to make you watch me do it because they are all the same. Once I got all my spines covered, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the outer portion of my wreath. I did take some longer limbs and I secured them on that V part at the top and I'll come back to that point because you're not going to see that at the end. I will be putting some decorations up there to cover it. So I figured that would be the best place to start. Now when I would get to the section where my spines were, I did make sure that I wrapped it really well to cover up the ends of my spines. And then I did also have to add some in as I went because a couple of them weren't long enough. But you don't see it once you get it all wrapped in and secured. Now, you can quit right here if you want to. I think this looks absolutely beautiful. But I had this old grapevine wreath. I think I got it from the Dollar Tree or either the thrift store. It wasn't very big and I had taken it apart and used it in another project. And I love how it's curly and it kind of gives dimension to my wreath. So I took it and I would take these pieces out and kind of shove them into the end underneath the wire and use a little bit of glue to secure it. And then I'd pull it up to the top and do the same thing. I like how it gives it more dimension. And these are the kind of things that you need to do to get more money when you're selling it. This makes it look more high end. It doesn't look homemade. It looks like something that you purchased in the store. And I love the whole effect of it. So I'm going to keep doing this until I completely cover my wreath. And then we'll move on to the stem. Now that I'm happy with how my wreath looks, we're going to work on the stem and all I'm going to do for this is take some twine and wrap around it. I did go into that V part, again that's going to be covered and you're not going to see it, and I glued down the end and wrapped a couple of times there, and then I just start going up my stem and wrapping around it. I use a little bit of hot glue every now and then to hold it in place so it doesn't slip and just keep wrapping around and around. Now this took me, I don't know about five minutes it's not too bad and then once I got to the other end I'm just going to wrap it around again in that V and secure it with some glue. Now I want to make a bow to go in the middle to cover up the pieces there where it all meets. So I grabbed all of my ribbon that looked fallish and I just cut off pieces I make sure I cut two pieces so I can crisscross it to make a messy bow. Now, I did not measure these. I just kind of held it up to my pumpkin to see, you know, how long I wanted it to be. 
once I got all of my pieces cut, I did dovetail my ends and all that means is I fold it in half and cut it at an angle and then I'm going to restack it back up once I get all of those pieces cut. And I did cut some of them shorter than others because I wanted you to be able to see all of it. Now we'll just gather it up in the center, wrap some twine around it about three times and tie it in a knot. And I did leave the strings on there to use to tie it onto my wreath form. And I'll use a little bit of hot glue to secure that as well. Now we're going to take our florals and I'm just going to start putting them in until I like how they look. What I do on one side, I always do on the other. I'm using these orange and cream colored flowers that I had. And I did have to use a little bit of glue, but I didn't have to use it on all of them because you can take the stems of your flowers and stick it in between those branches and it holds really well. I'm going to add some berries on each side and some leaves and berries into the center of it. And then I wanted to add this little pumpkin in the center of my bow. So I took some um, chenille stem and glued onto the bottom, securing it with a piece of ribbon. I'll twist it around my wreath form and then I'm going to twist it onto itself to make a hanger. And this project is finished. Now this wreath will sell anywhere from $35 to $45 at the craft show and they sell very well. We hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. We hope that you will join us all week for Made It Monday, Wild Card Wednesdays, Transformation Thursday, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!